the state of Arizona. Arizona. That's good, Governor. The state of Arizona. I kind of like the sound of it. I'm glad I live to see this day. Mr. Griff? No, thank you, Governor. Ooh, choice of Anna's. <laughs> I'll smoke this one. Well, you must have something very special there. Very special. Are you writing any more books, John? No. That was just a sideline with me. I've been working with the Department of Interior all these years. A friend of mine gave me this cigar. A celebration for him, too. His 30th wedding anniversary. Gentlemen, I'd like to propose a toast to a real lover of Arizona, to my friend, James Edison Rivas. The man who called himself the Baron of Arizona? Yes. He will always be a part of the Arizona legend. Were it not for him, Perhaps you gentlemen would not have formed your senatorial committee on statehood as fervently as you did. Oh, yes. I remember that cheap swindler. Swindler? Yes. But cheap? Oh, there was nothing cheap about James Rivas. Only remember what you read in the papers, Mr. Reynolds. But I don't understand, Mr. Griff. Uh, he's your friend? Yes. I've always thought you were bitter enemies. On the contrary, Governor. It was a challenge to have such a man as an adversary. He put up a most magnificent fight against the government. What on earth made him dream up such a fantastic swindle? Ambition. Wasn't he a clerk in the Santa Fe land office at one time? Yes, he was. And it infuriated him that ignorant people inherited land because the United States recognized Spanish grants. So he decided to steal Arizona with forged documents. Didn't he spend many years perfecting his plan? Yes, many years. He studied ancient records and learned to forge them. He studied languages. And he adopted the manners of a gentleman of culture. Knowing all these things were necessary to his scheme. He created a man called Miguel de Peralta, the first baron of Arizona. He was now ready to put his plan in motion. One rainy night in 1872, just outside Phoenix, by the name of Sophia? Yes. She was left with you when she was one year old. I am James Rivas from the land office in Santa Fe. Come in, Mr. Rivas. Oh. Arizona. For months it did not rain here. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <sighs> you mind? Mm. Mm. Uh, would you like a good Havana? I do not smoke. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Alvarez, uh, the government of the United States is a very fair government, you know that. It recognizes Spanish titles to land grants. Do you know what a land grant is? Yes. Well, it seems that back in 1748, the King of Spain gave to Miguel de Peralta a grant of land in America. Did you ever hear of Peralta? No. He was the first baron of Arizona. Baron? In America? Yes. 
and according to the laws of this country, his direct descendant is the rightful heir to the Peralta grant. Heir? Oh, yes, that, that means that the uh, per person related to him today owns all that land. What is this to do with Sophia? Her real name is Sophia de Peralta. Here are the papers to prove it. You, uh, you make family for Sophia with these papers? Read it. I do not read. Well, according to these papers, she is the last of the Peraltas. Sophia? She's singing Dolores to sleep. Who is Dolores? This is uh, Estrellita, Dolores' sister. I make family for Sophia, too, but not so good for her like these papers. Uh. They're called the lucky little mother. Sophia! Sophia! To Rivas, this undernourished child was the basis of his claim to establish an empire. He knew it would not be difficult to convince her that she had noble blood. I suppose it stunned this uh, Pepita Alvarez. Yes, but he was happy for the child. Rivas took them from their adobe shack to his home in Santa Fe, where he lost no time in molding her into a baroness. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you are Miss Loma Morales, unmarried, a, a teacher from Las Vegas College. Uh, Pepito, this is Miss Loma Morales, uh, Mr. Alvarez. Loma? What kind of name is that? Loma means a hill. I was born in Yucca Loma. Uh, were the terms in my letter satisfactory? Uh, this is the child, Sophia de Peralta. She is a baroness. Do you wish the position as her governess? showed promise. Loma taught her how to walk, sit, curtsy, eat, and listen. And while Sophia learned how to write, Rivas was writing in his own fashion, writing on a stone the foundation of a false claim that would stun a nation. on the rock. I have marked this stone, the heart of my grant, awarded to me by Ferdinand VI, King of Spain, on December 20, 1748. I, Miguel de Peralta, Baron of Arizona, take possession on this day, August 12, 1750. Never take what is not yours. Yes, sir. Sit down here beside me. Once upon a time, there was a little princess who had royal blood in her veins. 
But no one knew it except a prince who spent many years and in many lands looking for it. It is very pretty. Sophia. Sophia. Happy birthday, Baron. Colorado will be your private Riviera. Every day will be a holiday. New Year's in the Painted Desert, Christmas in the Gila Valley, and Thanksgiving in the Pine Timber. And the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon will be your play yard. That's a real birthday present, Sophia, from the United States. Over 113,000 square miles, as large as Italy. And it's all yours. Every mile, every foot, every inch. I promise you this birthright, Sophia. Are you going away for a long time? There are many important documents to gather so that you can inherit all this. Can't you do it here? I'm afraid it's not that simple. Then I do not want it. What did Aristotle say of dignity? He said, dignity consists not in possessing honors, but in deserving them. And? And I shall try to deserve them. Good. You and I must never lose our bearings, Sophia, not even for an instant. You must have <laughs> dignity. Only peasants cry. I know, but I want to go with you. I want to go with you. I want to go with you. <laughs> You are Sophia you. de Peralta, Baroness of Arizona. Say it. I, I am Sophia de Peralta, Baroness of Arizona. He then established evidence of Sophia's birth and falsified records, creating for her an entire family of noble blood. The family of one Miguel de Peralta. And before the ink certifying them was dry, he falsified the existence of her parents and carefully arranged to have them properly laid to rest. Having provided Sophia with the necessary ancestry, he sailed for Spain to complete his worldwide forgery. He had only one more act to perform. Falsification of the original land-grant book of Ferdinand VI, which was in the well-guarded archives the biblioteca in the monastery of Alcantara. Father Guardian will see you now. Oh, thank you, brother. Have you come for a short visit? I have come to stay. Oh, uh, forgive me, Father. I mean, I, I would like to stay very much. Hmm. But why have you chosen our order? 
Well, I have made careful survey, Father, and from the little I know of your order, I feel very much attracted to it. There is much to prove before you can join our order. After all, you must admit we know nothing about you. Charity commands us to accept you on your face value. But, for practical purposes, you will have sufficient time to prove yourself. And by the time you are through with your novitiate, we will know more about you. Oh, Brother Anthony, welcome to the library of Alcantara. I'm Brother Gregory, the custodian. May I assist you? Oh, thank you, Brother Gregory. But this is our scriptorium, where we study and do most of our spiritual work. That's very interesting. We have a fine collection of books which you will enjoy. The scribe room, where our experts copy and illuminate manuscripts. The illumination is magnificent. And the calligraphy. The repair room, where we strengthen and sew bindings. Is this for sewing the bindings? Yes, that's right. Uh, and the uh, press? Yes, the press. Uh, those are cakes of ink. Yes, we make our own ink and have not changed the formula in five centuries. And this is our biblioteca. This is where we preserve our ancient books and uh, priceless records. Huh? <laughs> you were surprised to find them chained? I can understand. But to re remove a book is strictly forbidden. Oh, but surely no one would dare. Well, who knows? Once a rare book collector acted rather strangely in this cell, and we were compelled to summon the civil police from Sevilla to investigate him. The Mazarin Bible. The first work of Gutenberg, printed in 1450. I thought it was in two volumes. You're right, Brother Anthony. Christopher Columbus's son borrowed the second volume and uh, never returned it. <laughs> The books and uh, records are listed. You're welcome at all times. Thank you, Brother Gregory. Lost no time stealing ammonia from the infirmary and milk and meal from the kitchen. He mixed his solution and tried it out. He had to make sure he could remove the ink. surface of the page with pumice to smooth the irritated grain. That night he gathered his equipment and hurried to the bibliotheca to forge the Peralta Grant in the 1748 volume.
his first major catastrophe. But he never admitted defeat. For months, he practiced ancient penmanship. For months, he made attempts to enter the bibliotheca while the others were asleep. But he failed. One day, however, he conceived a simple but most effective plan of gaining entry into the biblioteca where he could work. In his cell, he deliberately left a sample of his penmanship. Brother Anthony, did you write this? Yes, Father. I'm assigning you to the library to assist Brother Gregory. I prefer field work. You've been here three years. You're a hard worker, but your talent would be wasted. But, Father, I... Really... I suggest you go to the library. Yes, Father. This is our biblioteca, where we preserve our ancient books and priceless records. To remove one of the books... Brother from... Anthony. Yes, Father. The books and documents are listed. Will you get the land-grant records of 1748, please? condition the other copy is in. Uh, you may keep the keys. Brother Gregory is ill, but will be well tomorrow. You are custodian of the library for tonight. When Brother Paul has finished repairing the binding, be sure to return the book. Yes, Father Guardian. Oh, Father Guardian. Yes? Is there another copy of such a valuable book? The 1750 volume. It was written here. But the Marcus de Santella has it. He is secretary to the king. Are you ill? No, oh, Father. I was just thinking of the book. I understand your concern for ancient documents. But do not despair. They are well preserved in his castle near Madrid. I came here to the archive to seek peace within myself, Father. You are tempted to run away. I am not for this kind of life, Father. Others have been tempted, too. Meditate. 
We shall talk tomorrow. Father, there are so many reports, so many complaints. But in your case, we came just as soon as we were notified. I'm glad you came today. I... Oh, Brother Anthony! Brother Anthony! Brother Anthony! think he would run away. Run away? The wagon. He has taken our horses and wagon. We'll bring them back. That's not the way. He would not speak to me for fear I would inspire him to stay. Yes, he did appear frightened. As I was telling you, Father, your complaints finally brought official action. Tomorrow, all holes in the mountain roads will be filled, even those beyond the Roman bridge. <laughs> dead father, your wagon firewood. I found you, me, Rita. I'm not a monk, Rita. To escape police, I had to wear this rope. Who are you? A wanderer like Cain, looking for a woman of my own. She was beautiful, but I told her that a Spanish promise is like a Spanish pepper. It burns whoever tastes it. <laughs> here's a hat. Oh, thank you, Angie. And here's a coat. Ah. I think this will fit you. Ah, thanks. What's the matter? Aren't you going to finish the stew I made for you? Oh, certainly, Angie. It's excellent. It's your horses. Two years ago in Madrid, I was dining with royalty one night. One of them said that no amount of washing could turn a gypsy white. I accused him of insulting the gypsies. You said that to a nobleman? I spit in his face and received 20 lashes on my back. That pig of a nobleman was the Marcus de Santella. Santella? Secretary to the king? He's a pig. He prays every night to the devil. He's rich. I know. And I have a plan. In his house is much gold. I know exactly where it is hidden. But I need help. And we can all share in that great wealth. It's too dangerous. She's right. A thief never takes chances. We can get that gold. Then why do you need us? I told you I have a plan. As it is, they chase us like dogs from one province to another. Madrid. The Marquess would order half of Spain to hunt us down. Does a girl make decisions for you? She has a man's shrewdness. A shrewd woman would know when to trust a man. Now, why should we trust you? We don't know who you really are or where you come from. Tomorrow you leave our camp.
told you to leave tomorrow. Take me with you. I want to go with you. I will not be in the way. I will be good to you. I will be very friendly. Perhaps. You will take me. Yes. Yes, I can see you in Paris, London, America. Everybody bowing to you, treating you like a lady. <laughs> but you marry one of your own and have many dirty-faced children. No, 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 no. But you can't leave your people, Rita. They depend on you. They listen to you. I hate them. Oh, Rita, you're like a rich curtain before a doorway of wild. Wonderful miracles. There is no longer a curtain. Each band is a sin. And I want to confess them all to you. You make it very hard to refuse. I've known many women, but with you it's different. With you, I'm afraid. Is it true what you said, that no washing will turn a gypsy white? It takes money. It's all yours. Money I saved, stolen, hidden from the others. I hate living in the woods like an animal, people spitting at me and treating me like a mongrel. It's not enough for what we both want. Then we shall get more. The Marcus de Santella has much gold. Enough to dress you in fine gowns and take you far away anything, from me. Anything, anything you say, only promise you'll take me with you. I don't understand, Rita. Last night, she said it was too dangerous to go to Madrid. Today, she said we go to Madrid. I don't like this moving around all the time. It makes me feel like a vagabond. Gypsy, the one with the lovely beard. Ah, oh, Marquesa, I see a rich, fat man in your life. My husband is not a fat man. The Marquesa de Santella is a handsome man. Oh, yes, Marquesa, he is beautiful. It was because of me that he permitted this party. Unless you bring the tall gypsy at once, I'll have you driven off. No, wait. I thought I saw him go into the house. No, he's in the woods, making a love potion for you. I think he's in the house. Oh, he's waiting for you in the woods, he told me. told me that you would be here. She lied. She's jealous. And so am I. Last night you promised you'd spend every moment with me tonight. You must be cautious, your husband. I love my husband, but I'm bored with him and his musty old books. Hmm. Only a fool would waste his time on old books when he has a beautiful young woman to love. Please, don't leave with the others. Stay here in Madrid, where we can be together often. It's too dangerous here. I'll meet you near the fountain. I'll go first, you follow. Promise.
afraid. But he never kept the rendezvous with the Marquesa because he had more important things to do. He now is ready to come out into the open. Sophia was traveling in Europe. He wrote her to meet him in Paris. How do you like Paris? He's good, but I like Arizona better. <laughs> and uh, Sophia? In there, counting the hours. Loma? Helping her with the dresses. <laughs> the Peter. The Bonaparte. Sails from La Havre next week. Book a passage and uh, reserve the bridal suite. We go home! Oh, bridal? You married? You? Not yet. Well, now you tell me everything. What you do, where you go, how you live, how do you send so much money? You found the senorita in Spain, huh? At a bullfight, maybe. No, I found her outside of Phoenix. Huh? I'm going to marry Sophia. Mr. Rivis, it's good all you do for Sophia, for me, it's good. But it's only right for a man to take a woman as wife when he loves her. But don't you believe that I love her? I do not mean it that way, but uh, she's uh, not a girl now. She's a woman. You don't know Sophia as woman. I know her better than anyone else in the world. But you cannot put together cake to iron or a girl to an old man. Old man? Well, uh, uh, well, why not leave the decision up to her? Yes. She has a good head. We leave it to her. <laughs> Is she still singing Dolores to sleep? <laughs> Call the lucky little mother. Call her. Sophia. Sophia! But aren't you happy to see me? I cannot see you for the tears. My cheeks flushed. You can't see in the dark. I'm so excited. Did you notice my necklace? You sent it from Mexico. In the comb, do you remember? From Seville. The one I like best is, is the music box from... From uh, Madrid. <laughs> Sophia, how does it feel to be a woman of dignity and, and beauty? Why don't you ask how it feels to be lonely? You too. All my life I've known two men. The one who came out of the rain in the long black cape. The other one who was always in my dreams. Sophia, am I too old for your affections? Too old? Oh, I am grateful to have learned in all my travels what so few women ever learn. How to recognize love. I could never explain why, but it would fill my heart if you would become my wife. Oh, I've wanted it this way ever since I realized what I wanted. Oh, Sophia, Sophia. I have known many. Many women. But with you, I'm afraid. Hey, that's a pretty fancy carriage. Well, now we'll see what a baron looks like.
I am the Baron of Arizona. Howdy, Baron. I'm Miller, Surveyor General. Oh, may I present Mr. Miller, my wife, the Baroness Sophia de Peralta Rivas. How do you do, Baroness? Uh, we wish to claim full recognition of the Peralta Land Grant. There's uh, been quite a lot of excitement in town since your man told us you were coming. Royal is something new in Arizona. Our agents have collected the necessary copies of all certified documents. The royal decree signed by Ferdinand VI. The history of the Peraltas. The petition. Uh, are you sure the meets and bounds in, in this location are... Uh, I am. Well, there, there must be some mistake. Why this grant... Uh, uh, why, why it, 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 it takes in practically the entire territory of Arizona. It does take in the territory. It, it also includes uh, all mineral rights, all rivers, uh, all grazing ground. I'd advise you to investigate this claim at once, Mr. Miller, for you are living on our land. Good day, sir. According to your records of 1750, the stone marker would prove a definite location. And evidence that Peralta actually took possession. Well, maybe. It's a pretty wild country around here. And there is no stone. If you say so, Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller! Mr. Miller! Mr. Miller! Peralta. This man, Rivas, claims to own everything, from the smallest shack to the capital in Prescott. If the land belongs to him, the sooner the people know it, the better. Why? So they'll be saved court costs? Mr. Secretary, we're whipped. Gentlemen, because of the Peralta grant, the New Mexico-Arizona boundary has just been altered. Congress has refused the territory of New Mexico admission as a state to the Union until the Rivas bounds are clarified by us. Well, Griff, what about the signatures on these documents? This is a good Havana. But very often, a fine wrapper conceals inferior tobacco. You're the greatest expert in the country. Are these papers forged? I think so. No, 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 don't get excited. Why should a land office clerk finance a child's education when he could have bought the grant from her for a few dollars and claimed it for himself? Why did he marry her? Well, why? To protect himself? As long as a true Spaniard inherits the land, he knows the government will not violate the treaty. Gentlemen? has the stench of swindle. The signatures on these papers appear authentic, but they're still only copies. Well, Griff, what do you suggest? To examine the original source upon which this claim is founded. 
in the monastery of Alcantara in Spain. Come in. Sir, the president of... I am occupied. Not too occupied to see Gunther of Southern Railroad. Well, I've sent word to you more than once to come to my office. Your manners are as impossible, sir, as your chances to continue operating in Arizona. Say, what do you know about that? You're not going into the railroad business, too, are you? Now, see here, Rebus. Baron. Baron, I want you... Your lawyer told you that I hold the threat of stopping by injunction all railroads trespassing our land. He advised you to capitulate. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes. Since I don't want to impede progress, I'm permitting you to advance me $50,000. 50000 As a first installment for an immediate quitclaim deed. Just the amount I was going to offer you for my right-of-way. But in that case, I shall remove you from the trespassers list. Thank you, Baron. Thank you. Oh, Baron, how about buying an interest in some of your mineral rights? How much of an interest? Oh, 100,000 as a starter. That's not a very interesting start. Uh, Mr. Gunther, I understand that you own that... Uh, Magnificent mansion outside of Phoenix? That's right. Well, now, that would be a very interesting down payment on some of my mineral rights. Baron, you've got yourself a house. I'm a landowner. We all are. We want to know where we stand. In my private office without an appointment? Uh, just a moment, gentlemen. Let's not have any violence. At least not till I get my story. I'm a Cleary of the New York world. You don't mind answering a few questions, Baron. Is it true you're collecting thousands of dollars in revenues, rents, and royalties even before your claim has been recognized in any court? Would a railroad advance me a penny if there were a question regarding the validity of my claim? <laughs> not if I know those railroads. This is Gunther of Southern Railroad. Mr. Gunther, are you paying me for right-of-way through my land? Well, um, yes. Well, why don't you wait till the government recognizes his claim officially, Mr. Gunther? And be forced to pay him an impossible figure? That would be poor business foresight. If I were you, man, I would settle right now for what he demands. Why don't all of you gentlemen listen to the railroad man? That's why he's so rich. Baron, my publisher, Mr. Pulitzer, wants me to write you up as the man who changed geography. This is only the beginning. This is sufficient for me. Nothing is sufficient for anyone who can change geography. My dear, I've... I've just bought a private railroad car for us. We'll go all over our territory sometime next month. Oh, let's not go anywhere for a long time. I have so many wonders to get used to. This is our first real home. Anything you say, my dear. Is it unladylike for a baroness to... to shout to everyone that she loves her husband? Never mind everyone. Just shout it to me.
Well, I did it. You sure nobody was home? No, nobody was home. Tom, it's wrong. He's just a lot of fancy words. That little explosion will scare him right out of town. Don't worry, Carrie. We ain't going to lose our home. I ought to turn you into the sheriff. Pa! Oh. He can't take the law into his own hands. It ain't up to him to scare the baron out of here. It's up to the government. Hank, nothing will stop me from tangling with you if you get in my way. You just got a room in town, that's all. You got nothing to lose. We got everything. you might like a copy. My name's Griff. My library is complete. How do you do, Mr. Griff? Cigar? Thank you. <laughs> Writing books is a sideline. I'm with the Department of Interior. Oh? What exactly is your job, Mr. Griff? Not a very pleasant one, sir. I expose falsified wills, ancient manuscripts, and uh, Spanish land grants. I can understand the government's reluctance to part with Arizona. I am prepared for a thorough investigation of all documents. But I don't appreciate the inference of falsification of papers. I've never yet met a claimant who appreciated my presence in the case. Griff. <laughs> Come to think of it, your name is familiar. I heard of you when I was a clerk in the land office at Santa Fe. Frankly, didn't you read my book? I really don't recall it. I've just returned from Spain after following your trail from Mexico City to Madrid. Surprised? On the contrary, I'm pleased with your energy. I hope that your investigation proved interesting. Interesting enough for another book. Oh, and when you write it, send me a copy. Your penmanship was truly a masterpiece, a work of art. This is a good Havana, sir. But it's a pity your claim is a bad cigar wrapped in a rich Spanish leaf. Good day. Oh. It's autographed. How do you do? May I present Mr. John Griff of Washington, D.C.? My wife, the Baroness Sophia de Peralta Rivas. How do you do, Mrs. Rivas? Forgive me, this is very important. Mr. Rivas, during the investigation of your wife's parentage, did you go to the Guadalajara Cemetery? Yes, Mr. Griff, I did. And that is where her father and mother are buried? Yes, it is. Mr. Martinez, Is this the man? See. Si. Is he the one who told you he was looking for the tombstones of Pedro and Maria de Peralta? See. Si. Is he the one who paid you to cut words on two unmarked tombstones in the Guadalajara Cemetery? He paid me to cut flowers and keep the graves nice and beautiful. Martinez. 
You know the seriousness of perjury? What is perjury? Did you see this man today? I see him. Eleven years ago. He was looking for Peralta family. You told me he bribed you. What is bribe? <laughs> Poor devil. I can understand what happened and why you did it. It won't do you much good. Mr. Griff. You think my husband is a fake. Mr. Griff, look at me. Tell me, am I a fake? I felt a sense of guilt. Don't let their resentment disturb you, Sophia. It's wrong. Something is wrong. I never want to come here again. I mean it. You must accept certain terms, Sophia. Perhaps I'm not proud enough to accept such terms. I forbid you to speak like that. I remember when you forbade me to eat raw sugar. Then remember that you were a baroness. Now compose yourself. Sit down, my dear. How do you do, sir? How do you do, Baron? May I present Mr. Richardson, Secretary of the Interior? My wife, the Baroness Sophia de Peralta Rivas. An honor, Baroness. On our part, Mr. Secretary. Won't you sit down, sir? Thank you. Well, sir, we've had our best agent investigating your claim for six tedious months. Well, I have implicit faith in the integrity of our Washington experts. We can't afford delay, Baron. It's costing the people too much. And you leave us no alternative but to make good on the multitude of land titles we've issued. But well, I'm certain the government findings will be fair, and I shall abide by their official confirmation or denial. How much is the barony worth to you? Well, that's a difficult figure to reach, Mr. Secretary. As you are well aware, there are treasures of unmined gold and silver and uh, the rich grazing land and a most difficult figure to reach. Well... The United States is prepared to pay you $25 million for the purchase of the territory of Arizona. I regret that we must decline your offer, sir. What do you expect? Recognition of the Peralta grant. Baroness. Baron?
do you remember the day you sobbed like a little peasant? I did not want Arizona. I wanted to be with you. But I promised you your birthright, Sophia. Now it's yours, all of it, every mile, every foot, every inch. What is it you really want? And not only that, but my father was the first white American to, to pitch a tent in Phoenix. Since I was eight years old, I, I helped them plant and plow until we got enough to buy our own piece of land from the government. And then this fella comes along who says he's a, a baron, whatever that is. And every time I tried talking plain horse sense to him, he told me to settle with one of his clerks. Well, I'm going to settle with this baron himself. There's your chance, Lansing. There they come. <laughs> you to breathe this air. Brevis, you think the government would sell us land that doesn't belong to them? No. And any man who speaks like that is a traitor to his country. Citizens of Arizona, we don't want your homes or shops or livestock. Then why are you trying to scare us into paying for what's already ours? I have terrorized no one. I don't want to hurt you. I want to help all of you develop Arizona into the richest barony in the world. That ain't for America. That's for Europe. We ain't slave workers, and you ain't our king. No. But I am the baron, and what goes with the barony must and will be recognized by all of you, just as it was recognized 10 minutes ago by the United States government. We heard you forge them papers. There will be all kinds of rumors. Why don't you go to the Surveyor General's office right now? There's a man there who can straighten you out on this matter. He's from Washington. He just offered us $25 million for our land, but I turned him down. I'm not interested in money. I'm interested in land and its development. What if we don't have the money to pay you? What if we don't have the money? What'll you do? I shall evict you. <laughs> I feel like Caesar's wife before he was murdered. You've sacrificed much, but the effort will be worthless if something happens to you. I saw the faces of those people today. They hate us. They're afraid of us. Once you were afraid of me, remember? I was never afraid of you. I loved you the instant you gave me the second piece of candy. And I'm not happy to be the Baroness. That's because you still feel a sense of unnecessary guilt. Why must we have all the land? It would take me days to cover the acreage around this house alone. I don't want a dead baron. I want a live husband. Oh, I know only peasants cry, but I... I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> Right. 
Mom, away from me. You'll have to shoot me also. Addison de Peralta Rivas and Sophia de Peralta Rivas, husband and wife, versus the United States of America. The plaintiffs ask the government to confirm their title to the territory of Arizona. This is the most unusual case in the history of land claims. Every spectator has land at stake, and I, I paid the Baron four thousand dollars. Do I get my money back? I don't want to be compelled to have you arrested, but this is now a federal court. And while you have the sympathy of the government, I will tolerate no further disturbance. Is that clear? Has the government any legal proof exposing my claim as a forgery? Has the government any evidence to prove the ancestry of the Baroness Sophia de Peralta Rivas false? The government has not. Have you any proof to discredit the Peralta claim? No. Your Honor, I accuse the government of casting a cloud of suspicion on the integrity of my wife, the Baroness Sophia de Peralta Rivas. I accuse the government of encouraging mobs to violate our privacy and to make attempts on our lives. I accuse the government of costing us the hatred, suspicion, and distrust of the people living on our land by the deliberate delay of the recognition of our claim. I accuse the government of violating the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo and the Gadsden Purchase. And I demand that the government, according to its own law, legally, officially, and permanently, Confirm the title to the Peralta land grant. Is the government prepared to question witnesses? you even wish to question the plaintiffs? No, Your Honor. This sudden move of the United States being on the defense has come as a complete surprise. At this moment, we're unprepared to establish evidence that will prove that the original Baron of Arizona, Miguel de Peralta, was a mythical gentleman created by the fertile brain of Mr. Rivas. Because the government is the defendant, it is essential that this proof be produced as quickly as possible shall be presented as soon as we are ready, Your Honor. Let the court point out that if this proof is not valid, the United States of America will be compelled to surrender Arizona to the plaintiffs. We understand the gravity of the situation. Why, even at this moment, we are awaiting reports that will prove the grant and all the papers colossal forgeries. We shall prove that the woman known as the Baroness of Arizona inherited an utterly fictitious and fraudulent title. We shall prove that her husband, James Rivas, is a fake, a forger, a swindler, and a thief. Yes? Up to now, I fought my husband all the way. Poor showing for a wife, isn't it? I was on your side. I felt sorry for you. 
I did not like the thought of taking away your land, even if it does belong to us. I tried to erase the barony and all it represented. But now I can think of nothing but my husband. In this room, he was publicly accused of being a fake, a forger, and a swindler. I will not tolerate such charges, not even by the government. My husband is not a fraud. He is not a swindler. He is not a forger. I have nothing to offer him except my love and my faith in him. And if it's fight you want, it's fight you'll get. No one calls my husband a thief. business to settle, Baron, and we made sure nobody would disturb us. Now, this fellow Griff's all right, but we believe he's telling the truth. We got an idea you're going to outsmart him, and that's really got us worried. And if we don't have the proof, it means Arizona's handed over to you like a shot of bourbon. You heard what the judge said, but we don't want to see it go that far. Is this the vanguard of the vigilante committee? Maybe. Maybe we don't like your kind scaring people into giving you money just so they can hang on to land that's already theirs. That's very interesting. I'm touched by your public spirit, gentlemen. What do you propose I do about it? We ain't like the others who want to lynch you. That won't help the government much. You know a lot of fancy words, Baron. We heard you in court today. Just write a confession that it was all a mistake about the land grant. That'll make it easier for everybody. Start right. Who was she? Who left her with you? You an American citizen? Oh, was she? Are you a good American? Who left her with you? How are you in this country? They got your citizenship. I warned you against such tactics. They put words in my mouth. I do not know what they want. To me, he's the Baron. She's the Baroness. Mr. Alvarez. You will forgive the government for annoying you. Yes, yes, Mr. Griff. I'm sorry, you know how it is. All right. Unfortunately, this case is going to take time. Revis knows I know he forged the documents. He also knows it will be difficult to prove it. Very difficult. But what I don't like about this is the feeling of mob justice. That means people will be killed. You remember once before we walked like this near my little adobe shack, huh? Mm -hmm. Long time ago. And you remember that night? For months it did not rain in Phoenix. It was so dry one could not even spit. And then it rained. A miracle. Then you knock on the door. A great miracle. The rain brought life to the earth. You brought life to Sophia. But it is not your fault. People call you a fake. Because that miracle in the rain was one big lie. What are you talking about? I, uh, I know all the time. Sophia is not a Peralta. What? It is true. But I checked with everyone. They said she was abandoned with you. They all said she was illegitimate. No. She did have her mother and father. But there was a reason why I could not let anyone know this. What reason? She has Indian blood in her. I promised her people before they die, I tell no one. So she will be like other girls, you know. It make it easier for Sophia when she grow up and she get married, I promised them I take good care of Sophia. She will eat good and learn and uh, be a fine woman. But I am poor. And always Sophia, she has nothing but the pigs and the mud, nothing. And then you came. And I made my plan. You made a plan? Yes. But I did not think it would mean fights and shootings and lynchings and 
taking land from people. I did not think this. I think it would mean good chance for Sophia to have everything I could not give her. So I lied. I do not say you have found the wrong child. I say nothing. Oh, I do not sleep. I, uh, I'm sick inside. But all the time I say to myself, Pepito, this is good for Sophia. Oh, but now I know it's wrong. It's wrong. It is because of me that Mr. Griff say your writing on the paper is false. It is because of me he says Sophia is not a Peralta. He is a smart man. I will go to him and make a stop to all this. I will make a stop to people getting hurt. I will tell him it is not you, but me, who is the fake. Well, I'm... I'm sorry for what I did to you, my friend. Peter told me about myself. Did he? Is that why you're going away? No. Then it's because of what I am. That's not why I'm leaving. Then what is it? I'm a fake. Peter told me you would blame yourself for his fraud. Did he say that? Yes. You don't understand. He had a reason for lying. It was for you. I have no reason. It's for myself. Now your eyes look sick. You've been crying. I don't want you to feel guilty because of me. Oh, good heavens, Sophia. I've spent years developing your mind, and yet you're unable to, to grasp what I'm saying. I tell you I'm a forger. The whole scheme is one big fraud. There never has been a Peralta. I created the family out of my own mind and faked it with ink in the records. I married you because it was part of my scheme, not because I loved you. Well, I'm ready for your contempt and your disgust. Take a good look at me. Take a good look at your husband. Now you know why I'm leaving. I don't want you to go. Sophia. Look, we have over $500,000. We can go to Europe. They'll never find us. Oh, let's not have any illusions, James. We're guilty, both of us. You may go. I'll take the money back to the people. Now, you're having illusions. I am Mrs. James Rivas. And one of us must have the dignity to accept punishment. One of us must have the dignity to recognize love. I'll always love you. Nothing can change that. You still want me? I'll want you until the day I die. It is not death that is dying that alarms me. It is not your crime and your weakness that alarms me. Arizona. You seem so small. You suddenly seem so great. Now I know what I was looking for. A woman who would love me for what I am. No man can live without that. No man can ask for more. This will make you feel better, dear. Thank you. None for me, Loma. Mrs. Rivas? You sent for me? Yes, Mr. Griff, I... Uh, I have a statement to make. Strangely enough, I was on my way to see you when Mr. Alvarez came to my office. Oh? Mr. Griff, you were right. My claim is a bad cigar wrapped in a rich Spanish leaf. 
I am guilty of the criminal act of forgery with intent to defraud the government of the United States. My wife is innocent of any part in the conspiracy. And Loma Morales and Pepito Alvarez believed my story of her ancestry. They are blameless. That's very interesting, Mr. Rivas. Excuse me a moment. Troy. Your Honor. Ladies, will you please be seated? What is this? The Court of Private Land Grant Claims is now in session. What? This is quite an occasion, Mr. Rivas. One of historical significance. This federal court has been granted the permission to sit wherever and whenever it wants. And we've decided to hold court here, in your home, to avoid a mob riot and a public hearing. Mr. Rivas, we have legal proof that will indict, convict, and sentence you to the penitentiary. Proof? My forgery is flawless. Remember this? The 1748 volume of the Spanish land grants. I must admit, this is the finest example of forgery I've ever seen. Now, we had the ink on this page analyzed. It contains the tannin acid of oak. No, that's impossible. I made that ink myself. And the monks haven't changed their formula for over 500 years. A monk named Brother Paul came to Alcantara from the north of Spain. He brought his own ink. Every word on this page was written by him with his own ink. Except this account of the grant awarded to Peralta by King Ferdinand of Spain. This was written with ink which had no oak. You used the ink made in the south when you forged this page. You didn't need my confession, did you? No, not now. Will it be a, a long prison term? It's according to how much money you return to the landowners. The lavish manner in which you spent the money will determine the years of your imprisonment. But there's all the money. I'm tired. I need a rest. Father Guardian told me to meditate. I should have listened to him that night. The court cannot guarantee the rest, but you'll have sufficient time to meditate. Well, I will help you gather up all my records and receipts and papers. You'll need them. They're at my office. Mr. Alvarez, I'm going to request leniency for you. Frankly, Your Honor, I don't see criminal intent in his conspiracy. Just ignorant devotion and sentiment. Are you ready? Loma, I have never thanked you for all you've done for Sophia, the influence you've had on her. I'm... I'm grateful. Court is now adjourned. Are you ready, Mr. Graham? Yes. By the way, Mr. Rivas, did you read my book? It was my Bible. this case I can understand. What's that? After devoting so many years to this scheme, what made you confess? I 
I fell in love with my wife. Joe, I don't like this quiet. Yeah. Funny. I never seen this square so empty this time of night. be proven yours. Go out and hang me. What's the matter? Haven't you got any brains? Isn't there one man among you with sense enough to realize that once I'm dead, you'll never be able to prove anything? Ask the government man. He'll tell you that's why he was with me, to question me, to save your property. You know the law. 
Tell them what'll happen if they hang me. Tell them what'll happen to their land. What's lynching got to do with proving the land is ours? Hang me and you hang your ranches and farms and shops and mines. Hang me and you'll never give Griff a chance to get at me. He can't try a dead man. I've got to be alive if you want to prove that the land is yours. I've got to answer questions. I've got to identify documents. I've got to be legally cross-examined by the United States government. What do I have to do to pound it into your thick skulls? Hang me and you hang all your claims with you. Go on, hang me. I told you to leave me. 